And it's a very warm welcome back to the Bar Stewards Inquiry, our first one of 2021, and it's a very happy new year to all of our listeners. Uh, Of course, as always, this is in association with systembet.co.uk, and we've got Lee Keys of Systembet and John Lang of John Joe's Blogspot on Facebook, the usual panel, and myself, Catherine Fry, to uh, steer, steer the ship, so to speak. Uh, we're going to be taking you through the rearranged Welsh national card at Chepstow. And we're going to be taking a look at Kempton. Of course, Kempton receiving the rail keel hurdle from Cheltenham and the Lanzarote. Uh, before we go on to the cards, we're just going to um, take a few questions, which we've been sent. Um, some good ones this week. Um, some very amusing comments as well. Um, first of all, we're going to go with a question that was on our Facebook page by Tom Jenkins. He says, will the Irish turn up to Cheltenham and how will the books react to the screaming for justice refunds if they don't? Will Cheltenham go ahead with no Irish, no crowds, etc.? Um, John, let's go to you first on that topic. Um, I don't think it's a gimme mm. that, Cheltenham, that Cheltenham would go ahead if, say, the Irish were prohibited yeah. from travelling. Um, I think possibly if... Uh, if the thought it would maybe be a month and they'd be able to travel, I don't think it's beyond the bounds of possibility that they could put Cheltenham back a month. Yeah. Um, which would probably snook at the national meeting. That's the problem, isn't it? What yeah. and then you've got you kind of then you you almost wipe out Aintree and Punchestown. Yeah, I mean the the only thing you can say really is would it matter if the jump season overran by a month? Yeah. No, no, I don't think it would. You know, uh, most of them were spending January and February just having noddles round at the back anyway. <laughs> like the, it's not like the train all season, is it? So, yeah. Um, you know, these horses are generally brought to the peak for March. So, if things carried on an extra four weeks, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah. You know, as I say, you can you can move punches down and the entry back. It's not really impacting on the flat. It's just enhancing the program, right? You know? Yeah, fair comment. As regards the uh, the refund situation, I don't think there's anything the bookies could do other than refund, and they'd have to pay out with a smile right? because that's it, you know it's just going to have to be a loss later, isn't it? Because the, the stink it would cause if they took it as and he posts the lows as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a no-brainer that they, they couldn't do it. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Ali? Um, yeah, I, I kind of take all on board there. Um, I, I, I think, I, I honestly think that, that I think it'll be all right anyway. I think Cheltenham will go ahead with the Irish. No crowds. Um possibly maybe this i mean the bha might want to look at maybe including owners back for that meeting um i I honestly think by then middle of march we you know we could be okay in terms of you know sort of like cutting through the red tape a little bit with the irish runners coming across but i mean we'll see but it's a difficult one i agree but that's my scenario i think that the irish will be here but there'll be no crowds yeah maybe if it went ahead with no crowds, that would be the first time I'd fancy going for about twenty five years. <laughs> um, but me too as well, yeah. But, I mean I mean five pounds I mean I end up paying five pounds for a for a for a posh piss, you know. I mean yeah. you know, I mean <laughs> you know, because the queues were that massive that it's Well, not... I know a very, I know a very good spot where you'd be able to watch it as if you were there. <laughs> All right. Oh cool. <laughs> 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 But unfortunately, so it probably does half the town, so, you know. Um, okay, we've got a um, question which was put to us on um, Twitter. Lee, sorry, who did you say this was from? This was from Carl Swanson. On Carl Swanson, Twitter. that's it, yeah. yeah. Um, Carl sent us a question, which is um, which is great, actually. Which horses do you take out of the Christmas period moving forward? And what did you make of the drone pictures at Leopardstown? Was this done to stop you making a note of which ones of JPs weren't off in the handicaps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good to be fair. Yeah, good, yeah. Qu- 
Great yeah. question, Carl. Um, yeah, uh, Lee, as I'm talking to you, um, your thoughts on the Christmas well, period? Well, I, th there was a few uh, rumblings uh, in the professional punter ranks uh, regarding a few of JP's uh, that day. Um, and the, basically because of the, the drifts on the exchanges, mm -hmm. um, which were quite marked. Uh, <laughs> but we're, used to, well, we're used to that. Um, so I'm not going to pick out one in particular, but basically the, the one at Wincanton, I think. Uh, John, did you did you fancy that one at Wincanton? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, it was... Uh, I mean, oh, oh, yeah. you sort I of think, knew your face. I think, I think it trebled in price. Yeah, yeah. It, it was ridiculous. It was three times the price that it was advertised at, you know. Yeah. Sick, you know, I mean, it's... Beyond blatant, that I mean, it's great, great Christmas sport, isn't it? Yeah, I think what I found incredible was um, you could tell from the market that um, Sam Crow, Percy, et al. were not going to be involved in that Savills chase. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sam Crow is absolutely fascinating, actually, because. You'd have bet all money that they were having a look to see if he'd get the trip. And I mean, the horse was never asked a question at no, any stage of the race, and then he just pulled up. <laughs> Wait, I, 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 whatsoever, yeah. I, mean, I, I, can, I can speak for Catherine here because she did send me a, a, an email. Um, she said, I've got a feeling it, it's not the day for Sam Crow. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's a strange old game, the national one. I have to get my head around it sometimes because you know you like to treat every race as if it's sort of you know the 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 the, the, the straightforward straight back you know but it's not but i mean it, it was a great email from catherine to highlight that i felt um i mean on, on the flat they can get a quiet one can't they and get mate five six lengths yeah this, this game they can get mate six bloody wickets yeah. you know oh, get mate beat by three fences yeah it's, it's yeah. amazing um but I, oh, I, re replying to Carl, I, I think I give him a horse here that basically annoyed the hell out of me on Boxing Day, um, and I, I and it's basically because of the owners, right? So remember the 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 great mare, Lady Button, you know, yeah. fantastic mare, great for National Hunt game. Uh, uh, J uh, Mrs. Jane Civils who, who owns it, you know, they got all the media attention. What a darling mare this is, blah de blah. Watch Lucky Icon at Weatherby on Boxing Day and tell me <laughs> how darling that is. I mean, it finished fifth under Nathan Mosscrop and it was an absolute disgrace. I, I mean, you tweeted if, about it, Lee, didn't you? <laughs> ah, I mean, under, they've got it down to 110 that day. If it had got any kind of ride, it would have won. No question. Absolutely no question. You know the the big chicken wings all the way all the way down the straight. It's even on the heels of them coming towards the last bus. He just couldn't be bothered. And I just think, why on earth? What 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 are you trying to achieve? Right. But my point is, I've seen it, and I'm telling yeah. everyone else now. So there you go. You yeah. Know, I mean, what price are they wanting? It was twenty to one that day. You know, do they do they not want twenty to one? What what's up with them? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I, I was really annoyed that day. I thought, you know, you get the credit for Lady Buttons and then Lucky Icon at Weatherby that day was a disgrace. <laughs> Sheer disgrace. I think we were, I think I never expected to see um, Nube Negra hard on the steel on the inside, on the inside rail about to sweep past a dual champion chase winner and an Arca winner. Things you never thought you'd see, or well, that that <laughs> that definitely happened to me over Christmas. Yeah, and I think I think everyone that that sort of watched that, and and you're not alone because, as I said, I do talk to a few colleagues after the race, and everyone come to the same conclusion. Yeah. Eyes were popping. Yeah, I think I literally <laughs> would have liked I'd have liked to see a sort of um, camera on my face for that race because I think I think it must have just been one of absolute disbelief. Um in regards to the Leopardstown drone, <laughs> I felt that it, yeah, it was um interesting, but also at times I felt like a bit seasick. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe it was sponsored by uh, Mr. McManus. I'll, I'll be honest, as, a, as an in-running player, I, I, I find these uh, I t- the, the road, the one, the one with the car that goes along with the horses, you know, oh, the, 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 yeah. you know, mm. around, the, around the track. Um, I find it incredibly difficult to judge pace. So yeah. I, I can I cannot tell from that close up whether they're going quick, slow. I've no idea. So when they pan out, I can sort. I've got a better idea of pace. But so that that's 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 horrible for me, playing and running because I don't know how fast yeah. you're actually travelling. You can get no sense of speed. You can get nice close ups of how they're travelling, and I, I get all that. But and and sometimes you get this close up of the horse jumping the fence, which is magnificent to watch. But at the, the, and I, I I respect that. I'm an in-running player, and so therefore, you know, I've got not got rights to demand. Yeah, to, you know, it's um. I, th- I thought that when they when they did the the close-up at Fairy House, I thought that there were great pictures there. But obviously, I understand if you're making a living from it, then it's 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 not ideal. Um, just before we go on to the cards, I know you guys want to say a little bit about what happened at Fossless the other day. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I mean, it, I didn't. I didn't realise until a friend of mine sent me a <laughs> sent me a, a a message saying, "Have you seen this?" <laughs> and J- James Bowen was absolutely raging, raging with seething with rage on Twitter. He was saying, "We all want to race. The jockeys want to race. The trainers want to race. We're all here. We're ready to go." And you know, the idiots in charge say no, and. At first, I thought, well, you know, that's what they do. They're there to do. They're there to make decisions, you know. But then I saw the reasoning. Yeah. And, and the reason was <laughs> hilarious. I mean, basically, the stewards thought it was dangerous because if a, if a horse got loose after unseating or whatever and carried a horse onto the frozen part of the track, then that was deemed very dangerous. I mean, not that you're jumping fences at 32, 33 <laughs> miles an hour. That's not dangerous at all. But dangerous if one carries you onto the frozen part of the track. Terrible. Um, the Irish must have been laughing. But, yeah. I mean, but, the, but I mean, James Bowen. I mean, he he must have had two or three thousand on one. You know, like <laughs> he, he must have had <laughs> on that day because he was raging. Rage. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. think it was. I mean, if you consider that, um, pretty much to anyone outside of the Welsh Mafia, Foss Lass is an arse of a journey oh yeah for those people to the expense of getting the horse there the the wages for the start everything and then to get there and they're like okay i mean there must 10 minutes before they must have been practically saddling like do you know what i mean they must they must have been out ready to go pretty much yeah I get, I get the reason why they delay it so much because, because with no crowds, you're not inconveniencing yeah. the general public. You base trainers like, say, for example, Kim Bailey or whoever, uh, when he went up to air the other week. I mean, he, he, he praised the stewards for holding it so long because obviously he's travelled overnight um, and he wants ev- every chance to race, uh, yeah. you know, as long as possible because otherwise it's a completely wasted journey. So. I get why they're holding it so long. I, I don't. I ain't got a problem with that. It's just the reasoning for Foss Lass was just. <laughs> uh, John, anything you want to say about the Foss Lass stewards? Well, yeah, it, um, it it led to me drawing a bit of a conclusion about the sport in general, to be honest. And um, it's this ever expanding list I've got of useless <laughs> twats in race. <laughs> And I, I, I've come to a rather morbid conclusion that you can actually do without stewards, racecourse managers, clerks, and just rely on the ground staff, just say, keep that grass cut. <laughs> Have somebody there to open the gates when it's a race day. The steward is nonsensical anyway, you know, I mean, they, they couldn't spot a non trail if it was. Yeah. A spot on a domino, could could this? Depends, depends what colours you're wearing, though, John. Well, yeah, yeah, but you, you know, I mean, they are just useless. You know, there's the the team that's out to catch the wrongdoers at the BHA. I mean, what is all this lot costing at the end of the day? Yeah. You know, they, they stewards. You know, I mean, you know, you know, it's lovely. They've got the private parking spot and everything, and they have a good lunch. But 
you know, just an absolute waste of skin, a lot of them. <laughs> it, 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 it's just pointless employing these people. Yeah. You, know, you, you can weed out the BHA by about two thirds, get rid of the stewards because they're pointless, just have, have a panel sat in London watching it on the telly, and there you go, you're good to go then. Reminds me of that uh, scene in Wall Street, you know, Gordon Gecko standing up to tell their papers. And, he, and he's pointing at all the vice presidents saying, you know, saying, I, 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 bet, I bet there's more, more money wasted with you guys sending letters to each other all year. You know, I mean, it, it, yeah. it is literally like that. The set it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, it's, um, I think, yeah. I think, any do you, do you think, John? Well, you just never get it any better while you've got an organisation that makes appointments based on background. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know? um, there's absolutely no thought given whatsoever to capabilities to do the job, you know what I mean? Number one proviso is you had to have been kicked out of Sanders due to extreme stupidity. <laughs> and be too thick for your family to get you a job in the city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I must admit, um, I don't think I'm, you know, as, as, as I don't know how many people know, it's nothing important, but obviously I've kind of like stepped away from racing a little bit and like, doing, doing my MA and, and what's quite refreshing in that world is it's not governed by nepotism. Um, you know, everybody gets a fair shot. You know, in in sort of people on my course are come from all walks of life, and we all submit stuff for publishing, and there's no there's there's no nepotistic bollocks. You know, I can yeah. only speak for the uh, organisation that I'm at, but it's um, I don't think I've ever known a a body, an organisation, a sport like it, and it's um, it's sad because. We all love we all love the horses. We all love the racing. That's why we're, that's why we're in it. But um, it has been nice to take a, a little step back. I must admit. But without further ado, let's get on to these cards. Um, Chepstow, Lee, what have you got for us at Chepstow? Hmm. I wouldn't say uh, a deal. Uh, Kempton will be my me- meeting okay. tomorrow, and I'll be uh, you know for everything crossed for that meeting to go ahead. I think um, yeah. You think it'll go on? I think Kemp's will go. Yeah, I think it'll go good, on. Yeah. Good, good. I hope so. Um, uh, at Chepstow, that I can't, I can't really do anything than point the obvious out. Miles handicap hurdle at twelve fifty. Um, I did feel it was between um, the front two in the market, Farrant's Way and Storm Arising. The Sandown form from last time looks really good to me um, and there shouldn't be a lot between them at the end uh, so I'm not really telling anybody else anything much there uh, in the Welsh National um, obviously uh, the last time we, we went on air I, I was very keen on Dominator mm. I still am to a degree but I do realise that Secret Reprieve um, who was one, who was part of one of my uh, five fallers in 45 minutes under Robbie Power <laughs> Uh, uh, hey doc and then what did you do next time you know I mean it's just sickening that obviously you know you see that happen but under a four pound penalty he's going to take some beating but again it's boring at the prices um, I'd like to offer something different you've got Ramesses the Tay that's, that's a heavy ground slot monster he's beaten 86% of runners when he runs on uh, time based heavy ground um, truckers lodge um, he, he's another soup monster, uh, beating eighty-one percent of runners when running on time-based heavy. Um, there's a lot you can fancy in that, but as okay. a dominator, I'd like to see run well. And uh, secret reprieve will probably be hard to beat, but I'm not putting up any bets uh, from Chepstow from myself. Okay, and um, John, I hear Chepstow is your favourite meeting. It, it's right up there with the best <laughs> Catrick has to offer, to be honest. <laughs> um, I'm. I'd like to think I had a fair old cut at this card yesterday. Um, okay. And uh, I've sort of got it in my head that we need soap monsters. So needless to say, the, uh, the winsome one has had a fair bit of coverage in 
I reckon you fancy her, John. Well, I'm... <laughs> I'm sort of between two stills, really. I'm, I'm <laughs> um, I, the big fur hat's put me off, if I'm honest. Oh, does it? Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, you know. Um, anyway, to business. <laughs> Before I get too embarrassed, um, <laughs> the eleven forty-five race, the the, the novice hurdle. Um, yeah. Have you got pumpkin in there with Paul Zoe Emery? That's showing a bit of promise and things. I think that would probably be favourite. Um, but there's also in there called the Young Warrior, who is absolutely bred for slop. Is by Chaparelli out of a French mare, Nobratinata. And uh, I think he will sluice through this ground, and I'm pretty sure there'll be a saving each way price as well. Because um, I'm, I'm intending a life changing lucky 15 tomorrow at Chepstow. No, I could do one of those, John. Yeah, at, at tidy prices. Yeah. Um, 12 17, the first one from the winsome one, Sir Page. Wasn't unfancied on debut this one, and I think ran as though it probably needed it. Um, I was going to say, where the hell is Asso? Because uh, <laughs> this is one of the races he's been absolutely suited to. Uh, I mean, I, I was really strong on him at Christmas, and then of course he couldn't run because the meeting was off. Mm. And I said to a friend of mine, I said, this dizzy bent's going to miss the heavy ground with this. And sure enough, he's not entered up at the moment, so expect to see Asso back when it's good to soft and uh, he'll get thumped somewhere. Um, but I like Sir Page in the 12-17. Then um, there's a horse in the 158. I do hate these race times. It's like we're doing bag tricks here, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, a horse called Hold That Thought. Um Again, for the Queen of the Fair Hats. Um, this one hasn't really had a chance to shine on really shit ground. Right. And I think it will, you know. Um, that's, again, the, the main thinking behind the selection, you know. I, th I think there's improvement to come. And that improvement will come when it's chest deep, you know. Um, and then in the 2.30... For the hat trick for the hat queen, um, I don't think the favourites sure to say this out, um, and I think even though the selection easy as that was a bit novicey on on debut, I think the fact that they won't go a mad gallop here will give them a chance to get it jumping in a decent sort of rhythm. Okay. And I think um, it'll almost certainly outsteer this lot. I think it's got stamina in abundance. Um, and then my final selection at uh, Crappers, I'm going for a Trucker's Lodge in the Welsh Nash. Yeah. Because obviously Venetia hasn't made it there with my initial selection that got beat at uh, Liverpool. Yeah. That's on the MIA list now, so... <laughs> I've switched to Trucker's Lodge, a well-known slot monster. Yeah, okay. Um, that's me for Shepstow. Uh, I'm loving it, John. I never thought I would hear such a love for National Hunt Racing come pouring out of those dulcet tones of yours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whilst, whilst we're on um, Chepstow, um, in, in the first race, um, in the uh, 11.45, um, Rebecca Curtis runs a horse called uh, Ranieri. Um, big fan of the dam of that is out of Carabmorna Storm, who was a fantastic mare. And I think that the ground won't pose too much of a problem there. So quite a little fancy for me on that one. And in the Welsh National, um, I've actually gone... I mean, I, I did expect him to be a little bit bigger, but his 14s, uh, Bobo Mack, not too sure about the distance, but can take heart from the fact that he was staying on over two miles seven in the Welsh National Trial. <clears throat> There's not a massive amount of stamina in the pedigree, but he does sort of shape as if he'll 
if, if he wants further. Obviously, Tom Simon's having a fantastic season. Uh, second run back after a wind up. Adrian Heskin on board. Carrying 10 2. You did and... 7 on the machine, Catherine, at the oh, Okay. Um, so that, that's 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 my thought on the Welsh Nash. Obviously, there's Big River in there that I think was my original fancy. Um, needs about 200 miles, and it'll certainly feel like that tomorrow. Um, so I wouldn't. I'm not going to go against that and put anyone off that. But um, there endeth our thoughts on Chepstow. I would well, encourage every listener to follow you in on Bob or Mac as well to ensure we don't have another incident like the fraud on. <laughs> Uh, well, well, this that, this is it. It's a sore subject. I mean, you know, I mean, what an idiot. I mean, I mean, you be, know, I'm, I'm gonna have to we have to go back and clip that up. And I'm like, Lee, Frodon's a bit big, isn't he? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. And then you even went, oh, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> like that. Oh, okay, yeah. like like Santa had just nicked my presents or something. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's mutterings from the cheap seats that there's only one national lunch judge on this panel. Uh, it's already started. It's been started <laughs> a while, and you know, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't care. It's terrible from me, really. <laughs> right, Lee, shoot, give us Kempton. Yeah, um, I'll make up for it because I've got four pretty strong bets at Kempton. Um, yeah. Some nice prices as well. Um, the 110 at Kempton, the uh, two and a half mile handicap chase. Um, I see lots of money for Smarty Wild. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, what, I mean, you, you feel for these people because I can see why they're backing Smarty Wild, but you know, you can see, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the horse has got absolutely tons in hand off 130, but you know, it's the it's the man on top. It's the man on top, yeah. It's going to ruin it. Um, so it, it won't be that. Um, I, the one I liked in this was the Bay Birch, um, the mayor of Matt Shepherds. Um, you know, she's getting a bit sort of long in the tooth for a mayor. You don't really see, see many mayors racing, you know, beyond sort of 10 years. And, you know, this, yeah. this basically, she could be slightly on the decline. I, I don't deny that. But <laughs> when you consider that... Um, this term, she's not really had a ground. Um, they tried her over hurdles last time. Um, obviously, she's not as good over hurdles. Um, and she's got a ground at Kempton. And she's also down to a mark of 128. And when you consider that on the 21st of September, she was third off 138. You know, it's on ground that wouldn't have suited. Um mm-hmm. I think now we're getting into the stage where we need to be, t- uh, you know, bringing it to, to the fore. And, and at sort of 12 to 1, 14 to 1, um, I think she's a quite an enormous price. Uh, <laughs> my next bet there um, goes in the Rel Keel. Um, and I, I cannot see past uh, the Paul Nichols horse, McFabulous. Um, uh, basically, the, I, I had a word for this horse in the. Uh, in the the, the uh, long distance hurdle at Newbury, where Time Hill and Paisley Park, obviously, mm-hmm. that they, they look they look head and shoulders above in the staying division, um, and but McFabulous, they did they did fancy this one to, uh, you know, to, to do the business, and and I, I cannot see Somerville boy reversing the form. Um, I'm not a fan of Thomas Thomas Darby. Um, I do think I don't think you never calls going to get any better. So I thought McFabulous was a real solid banker in the Rel Keel. Mm-hmm. Um, my third one, and possi- possibly my best bet on the card, but but maybe not, because it could be the last one. Um, I-, I felt riders on the storm of Nigel Twist and Davis in the Sylvian Sylvia Echo Conti race was was massive at 5-1. to one. And the reason I say this is because Master Tommy Tucker's felt... Of the three runs he's had round he's fell twice round here. Yeah. Um, so, and we, we always think horses remember things and, you know, they do. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't like that to be taking sort of like 100 to 30, that horse. And mm-hmm. an Imperial Aura, the favourite, I get why it's favourite, of course, it should be favourite. But when you look at the actual form, it's beaten Windsor Avenue by two and a half lengths. That's not exactly form that's working out particularly well and then it's beaten itchy feet um at ascot um when itchy feet ran next time and didn't look entirely in love with the game 
So yeah. I'm not I'm not convinced that that's form for an odds-on chance. And Riders on the Storm, if you look at his profile last year, I know it's not a, a, a been a, a, a good season for Nigel, but he was very impressive when beating Yannick at Ascot. And then he fell when still in contention behind Min and mm-hmm. at Cheltenham. And he was camp- he was started off at two miles uh, at Cheltenham, which he was never going to win at. Yeah. So so I mean this this to me is this could be Nigel you know climbing back for the remainder of the season, and I think he could land this. I think five to one's absolutely enormous. Okay. Um, and the last bet of the Kempton card um, is in the Lanzarote. And I'm very, very keen again for Nigel, big day for Nigel, um, <laughs> on one, one True King. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's not really a close guarded secret that this horse is going to improve massively for a step up in trip. Everyone could see that at Cheltenham when he was second to Lively Citizen and Tegarek the time before. Obviously, had a dot round at, at, at Leicester at odds on, um, which hasn't affected his handicap mark, 132. I'd say you could put anywhere between seven and twelve pounds. Oh, that sounds a bit accurate, doesn't it? But uh, you know, improvement in terms of uh, of his mark from what he's done at two miles. So I'm thinking six to one plus each way, a pleasure. You know, uh, search out the great each way terms, and I think one true king won't let you down. I think he's right there at the finish. Very confident. So okay. that's my four there. Yeah, great stuff. Cheers, Lee. Um, John, go on. I know you love it. What's your Kempton thoughts? Well, um, I'm just going to couple of scabbies, really. Um, in the 110, uh, I was really interested in Pistol Whipped. Mm-hmm. I think this is on a fair mark. It certainly goes well fresh. Um, it Its form sort of tailed off last year because it kept pulling like a lunatic. Um, and I'm hoping that Popeye's got it a little bit more at ease with itself for this year and I could see that running pretty well um, I'd maybe want a little bit bigger price than what it's showing at the minute if I'm honest um, I think maybe the Hobbs arse will be a danger as well if, especially if there's any fences omitted if the sun gets out um, because obviously the Hobbs arses don't like jumping do they? <laughs> I don't think it's the horses well I kind of feel a bit sorry for the Hobbs horses, really. I bet they're like, oh, Christ. Well, I, I, I did hear that they all think they're being trained at Balaclava. <laughs> um, you know, um, anyway, as I said, what do you make a pistol whip play? Um, I'm not his biggest fan, to be honest, but, you know, I can see I can see your reasoning, John. Mm. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm certainly not going to knock it. Um, I'd, I'd agree entirely with Lee on the uh, issue of McFabulous. Mm-hmm. I think this brings proper stairs hurdle form to this race, and I think it'll smash these sideways, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I did like the way he travelled at Newbridge on. You know, like some of the, yeah. Somerville boy was, was grossly off the bridle, whereas. Quality yeah. arse, I thought, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I really expect this to win tomorrow. Um, well, we're on the subject anyway. Where's Ralph Kale got a race named after it? Was it that good? Uh, <laughs> Fair point. I don't remember it winning much. It's kind of yeah, it was a it, it was a it was a solid old stick. I mean, yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Just like a hardy perennial grunter, though, wasn't it? I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. You know. I think it might have more to do with the fact who his owners were. Very possibly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a decent horse. It was. I mean, the Rail Kill is obviously not being run where it should be run. Rail Kill was kind of the standing dish at Cheltenham, wasn't he? Um, back in the day. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the three thirty race, one that um, I think we all lost a couple of quid on last time. Uh, Hunter's Call. <laughs> now. Right, Hunter's Call. Well, apparently, this one lost a show at some point in the race. Oh, surprise! The way but he... but <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, he's also lost the rattling bag of shite that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, th- I think, really, we've got to give him another twirl here, because, I mean, it's so back. 
you know, and uh, maybe this course won't lend itself to him running as well as he did at Liverpool, but you've got to give him a, give him a go with the fresh pair of hands, I think. Yeah. Um, if you go on his... Um... If you sort of take Aintree out of the equation, which wasn't his fault at all, but if you go on his back form, then yeah. you make a serious case for him in in the Lanzarote. Yeah, but yeah, I have, we have, I have to be with him tomorrow because I've been with him like most of the season, and I was extremely keen on him at Aintree, and I do believe Aintree was his day, but unfortunately, someone walked him through the second last, um, which I still haven't quite got over. Um, but I'm just going back to the uh, first race at Kempton. Um, I'm going to sorry, no, I'm being completely insane. Um, I don't mean the first race at Kempton, apologies. I mean the third race at Kempton. Um, I'm actually going to have a, a little flutter on our trois fill. Um, I was hoping that this horse would actually, I was looking for this horse to go and run in a handicap at the festival last year. So he didn't. Um, his first run, I thought he ran with credit on his first run for the Moors. Um, so he has his second run after a long break, nearly a year's break there, um, for Gary Moore. Obviously, he's quite high in the weights from his back form from Ireland. Nar Houlihan on board taking the seven off. Um, I do, I think, Kempton, I think this. I think that will really play to his strengths and get him, get him stretching, get him jumping at speed. Um, I, I quite fancy him at the 12s on offer tomorrow. I think the kid yeah. taking the weight off as well tells you it's probably yeah. offer its life tomorrow. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. The he, 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 he's yeah. very good. He's very, he's very good for seven. His yes, miles. Yeah, I mean we haven't got time to get this down with reasonable man can because I mean it'll be about 160 by the time that man is so. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know even if he even if he's looking at him for a festival handicap if he wins this tomorrow and goes up a bit he's still going to be sort of be only what bottom middle in a festival handicap um yeah. so yeah I, I mean yeah i was hoping i was hoping he'd get in last year but he didn't let's face it this outfit have a hell of a lot more chance of winning this tomorrow than the other festival handicap <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 they've got no chance of winning this they've got slightly more chance of winning the fa cup Oh, Christ. Yeah, that's a fair comment, John. Fair yeah. comment. Um, anyway, quickly, let's move on. Um, right, who you got some rumblings on your weather for me. Well, yeah, just, just one in case, obviously, you know, the, the elements take, take its course. Uh, 2.15 Lingfield tomorrow. Um, I did feel there was one very interesting at around the 8 or 9 to 1 mark. It is okay. priced up outside of the field which is the Richard Hughes trained Summer on Seven Hills. Um, this horse announced itself uh, last year as a plot job. Um, they no. won a race off by six lengths at 11 to 8 off a mark of 70, followed up off 82. It ends up in the Lingfield Derby trial. Typical of racing, really. Um, you know, this, this is the done thing, you know. You, you end up winning off 70 and then up in the, in the, the Lingfield Derby <laughs> trial running against English King. Um, but but yeah, this horse now is off 88, and I do like the first time gelding angle from Richard Hughes because he's got an outstanding record okay. of horses that he gelds, um, and and he obviously gets them ready, gives them time. They're obviously fit, firing, and off 88, uh, summer on Seven Hills has no right to be eight to one. In fact. I, I've already priced the race. I make it half that at four to one. So somewhere on Seven Hills tomorrow is the flat bet if we're all bored. How, how do you think he's looking as a trainer late? Um, because yeah, he, he kind of blended into the wallpaper a bit with me, and, and really took an awful lot of notice of it. Well, he, he, I think he's lacking in 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 significant backing. I, I wonder if he set up thinking, well, you know, I might be able to poach a some of Richard Ann's big owners. I might, I might, be, able, might be able to get uh, uh, Quattar on board, might be able to get a few others. And it just hasn't worked out for him. He, he's mm. had support, but he hasn't had the big the big Arab support. Or yeah. the, you know, I haven't the, noticed the, any familiar colours, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, yeah. and, and, and another surprise for me, right, given he was uh, 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 Prince Khalid's jockey, uh, I don't really see many 
many horses that he trains for. I, I haven't got the stats in front of me. I've not done it, but I can't remember many horses that has been sent from Prince Khaled. And if you think about the relationship you had with Prince Khaled, I, I find that surprising. Up to, is that up to and including home affairs reception? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 mean, I take your point. But I, as I said, I, I just, I, clearly, he's not getting the, the big support that, that I'd have. I'd have thought he might, given his profile. Yeah, I, I thought he'd have made a bit more of a splash, to be honest. Yeah, but he, he's capable. Um, oh, I, 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 it. I mean, he's from a solid horse family, isn't he? You know, I mean, yeah. um, I, mean I, I wouldn't be only one with him paying 60 a day or whatever they charge down there, you know, and up, yeah. up in the north, you know, 60 a day, it's, uh, <laughs> it's you know... <laughs> It goes a lot further, um, but yes. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate paying sixty a day with him, but certainly I, I, I do think that he hasn't possibly had the tackle that maybe hmm. possibly he, he's worthy of. Yeah, I, I kind of get the feeling he's sort of simmering below the surface, and if, if he got a couple of decent breaks and yeah, few more people took a bit of notice, he he, he could take off. Like yeah. I said, the lack of Arab support, I'm surprised at. But yeah. Unless he unless he stopped a few and they've all got face on with him, <laughs> you know. And, he, and he's in his time as a jockey, you know, it's like they've they've all they've all had massive bets, and it's like, well, what, what's he done there, you know? Well, I, I think when no one affairs ran at Epsom that day, I think that was two of the first recorded cases of COVID because I don't think Abdo or Stout he could breathe. The <laughs> uh, they were both in the respirators. <laughs> superb, superb tonight from John. He's come out with some absolute class. Oh, he's, uh, yeah, he's good. You're on form tonight, John. Okay, right. So, who's who? What are you going to put up for your patent then, Lee? Oh yeah. Well, I, I mean, are you? If you're going to, is any of you two going for one in the Lanzarote? No. As your best bet. No. No, you're not. Um, I think. I mean, are you are you are you are you two's prices sort of like big prices or? Uh, I don't know. I don't think mine's priced up yet. Let me look. Because I'm thinking we could do an each way patent this week, and I, I would put the Twist and Davis run a one true king in, in the Lanzarote as 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 my each way nap, rather than rides on the storm, which I think. Uh, mine's eight to one. Well, we'll go for an each way patent, and and I'll I'll put in one true king okay. in the in the Lanzarote. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, mine is uh, Ranieri first race at Chepstow tomorrow. Cool. John? Yeah, I'll go with hold that thought in the 158 bags fixture at Chepstow. <laughs> <laughs> Trap size, right on the bunny. Ah, superb. Brilliant. Okay. Well, let's hope that. Um, we can we can make a few quid with that patent. Um, once again, thanks for listening. Um, glad glad we recorded tonight. Um, certainly is a uh, a bit of a laugh after what's been quite a uh, more than mediocre week. Um, we will be back, of course, next Friday, and uh, we will talk to you then. Good night. <laughs>